the whistling man. What the hell? Killer Frequency is a unique game. It takes a swing at something different and for the most part, it lands brilliantly. The game is essentially a first person horror adventure title. You take on the role of Forrest Nash, a big time radio host who for unknown reasons has had to leave behind his huge listenership in Chicago and take a low level gig in the town of Gallows Creek. This particular downgrade goes by the title 189.16 The Scream and you quickly get the impression that our protagonist Forrest would rather be elsewhere. Things liven up quickly though when we get word that a legendary serial killer named The Whistling Man has reappeared in Gallows Creek, wiped out the sheriff and has now gone full Michael Myers. With the police dispatcher venturing off to get help, you are tasked with not only fulfilling your radio duties, but also taking 911 calls on the air. Think guilty with Jake Gyllenhaal, but in a radio station, and with awesome 80s style. With the stage set, we now get into the meat of the game. You'll be spending most of your time taking calls from distressed locals who have been hunted by the deranged killer. Each caller will have a half-cooked, usually absurd, idea for how to escape their predicament, but they need you to do the legwork and guide them to safety. For example, Eugene the Virgin had planned to meet up with a girl in the middle of a maze to get his hole, but he now finds himself being hunted by the Whistling Man. Here, you need to use a map and rely on him to tell you what he can see to guide him out before he meets an untimely end. Hi! Hello? Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein, and... I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. The puzzle to free each caller from the clutches of death is fun and unique. It could be argued that each solution is fairly straightforward, but I do think that developer Team 17 Digital struck the right balance and never allowed any aspect to become frustrating. Even if I did have to get Jess to help me once. The decision to make our protagonist a stand-in 911 operator while also having to perform his normal radio duties was a stroke of genius. In between calls you'll be playing records, chatting with your producer Peggy, playing ads and sinking some baskets. This extra busy work keeps everything flowing and keeps the player on their toes. While the game is dialogue heavy, you're rarely just sitting about listening for long periods. Plus, there is some exploration. To help most callers, you will need to search around the radio station for clues, obtaining keys for previously unavailable rooms, and as you progress, this helps unfold the narrative. Another area killer frequency nails is the humour. Getting a laugh out of a killer rampaging through a small town takes a deft touch. There are many moments in the game that will have you laughing out loud. From a local business owner shooting their shot for promotion during a crisis. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza! Start a job- You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! To more nuanced moments like playing completely inappropriate songs while you go and try and figure out how to save your next caller. All of this fits perfectly in the 80s slasher aesthetic. While I wouldn't argue that this is a game of the year level story, the mystery surrounding the Whistling Man and the secrets of Gallows Creek kept me captivated throughout while crucially delivering a satisfying ending. I have always been a big fan of what Telltale Games did with the adventure game genre. Here, Team 17 has provided a light-hearted horror take in the same mould and executed it really, really well. Clocking in at around 5 hours of playtime, you will likely want to revisit the game to save those you didn't manage to first time around. Or, 
perhaps to lead everyone to their death, since there's an achievement for that. Killer Frequency is out now on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, Steam and in VR on the MetaQuest 2. There is currently no word on a VR mode for the PSVR 2, but a port certainly seems likely. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please subscribe for future content.